Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match for Nanalea Zidane. I am your host, Chad, if you're 63, as I remain, and we are on to Flipstep versus Capricious on Onyx Cauldron. A rather pretty watery map with a bunch of rain, which you probably can't see because, you know, I've actually never checked if. Yeah, I guess you can't. You can sort of see it. Anyway, let's begin. Not much further to say. Flipstep going for the Cloaky Bot Factory? Or no, sorry, Cloaky Gun Gunships. I can't even recognize factories when I see it or read the name. Gunship Factory. Cloaky Bot is Capricious's choice because Capricious has often been going for Cloaky Bot recently. Though this is a map where I'd say it's actually not a bad idea. Amphib has been super popular on this map, though. I mean, Amphib has been super popular, period. Quite honestly, it's always one of those things people use. Always. And now I've got to deal with that silly issue with the... Um, my apologies, one sec. This, I don't know what it is with the engine, but for some reason these maps, like, there is no hill right where I'm looking, right in the center of the screen. Do you see a big hill? I see a tiny hill, but I don't see a big hill. Apparently the game does. It's probably some weird interpolation bug. I mentioned it before. Their interpolations can cause problems if you aren't careful with them. Although it's a piecewise thing. Like a piecewise Hermite curve should not cause that. That's more of a polynomial overcorrection. But whatever. The point is... Gunship, Blastwing Rush, and a lot of damage. And Banshee right afterwards. Flipstep playing this like RAR. Well, RAR is Gunship play. Oh boy, this is going to be tough. I mean, Capricious... Getting a few defenders up, they're already setting this up. I mean, they got defenders, they have gremlins. We know that Capricious has a really good set of reactions. They're very good at, def at setting up what they need to set up. The main problem has usually been long-term focus, but in this case, it's going to be possibly a quick game, or at least it's going to be a very intense start. I mean, unlike last game, the last game we saw, there wasn't really any rushing for the first few minutes. This game, however, right out of the gate. And another Glaive. Capricious trying to find any opening they can... Unfortunately, will not work thanks to the Banshee, and of course, there's still a Banshee over in this western side of the map, so Fliptip really getting those Banshees up. Now, finally getting their own crane, too, for a little bit of extra construction power. But at this point, I think that Capricious' base is probably safe enough. Getting a couple defenders, getting Loises, getting more Gremlins. A few more Gremlins wouldn't be a bad idea because there are likely to be more Banshees. Fliptip is not switching to ground from the looks of it. Though, it wouldn't surprise me if they did. But I don't think they are right now. They don't appear to be... Capricious, probably with five or six gremlins, would be safe enough. Not the safest, but safe enough to buy time in case there was a big Banshee attack. Wouldn't hurt to build a Stardust, though. Especially if there was a ground switch at some point. But it looks like no. In fact, Flipstip is more focused on the defense. They are building more Banshees, though, so more gremlins are definitely a good idea. But the Banshees look to be used more for defense, a little bit of raiding around making sure that Capricious has not gone for any hidden expansions. But at the same time, Flipstip can also protect their own expansions with the Banshees. It's one of the hardest things about playing against gunships. But at the same time, gunships can't really take the ground so much. It's not too hard, but a lot of people... Most people I've talked to about it basically seem to agree that gunships aren't great at holding ground, which I don't understand why, honestly. I think they're... I mean, they can move around and defend pretty easily. I guess for their health, they're slightly overcosted, so that might be a problem. But otherwise, I don't really know. I think that gunships, they're not like fixed wing aircraft. Fixed wing aircraft, okay, good luck holding in a position. Gunships, though, no, much easier time. And this Banshee, however, not got rid of a metal extractor. Okay, so the Gremlins are forcing Flipstep to respect Capricious a bit, but Capricious right now cannot expand at all, or not very much, not easily. I mean, they're slowly but surely expanding, building Razors, building up their... Well, not only other Defenders, but they are building Zeus now, I guess, to stun out the Banshees? That seems the only likely situation. I mean, if they're expecting a switch for heavier units, maybe? And Flipstep is going for a Hovercraft switch, actually. That is the switch in question. So it's probably a good thing that Capricious is not going for any construction. It looks like they might actually be going for saving up some money. Not building right now, just waiting until they see what happens, and then supercharge build it. I mean, as it is, Flipstip's kind of doing that too. They're saving all their money to pump out as much as they can with the Hovercraft platform. I think Capricious is doing the same. Oh, okay, another, another Zeus. Power that out ASAP. Looks like... Well, that Banshee still doesn't have a whole lot of ways of getting in. That wasn't a huge amount of damage. But Flipstip does have the economic advantage. That's the thing that they got. That's what, I mean, the Northeast is entirely Flipstips. Capricious barely able to expand into the Southwest 
even with the Razor support, I mean, they're, they've got to be scared. That's the thing, that it's really hampering their expansion just because they aren't actually expanding. They, it's hard when you just know your opponent can attack you from any side unless you have defenses set up, which Capricious does, but those take time. You can't expand in the wild. Like, I mean, Flipstip is practically naked expanding right now. Protecting it a little bit now after expanding a little bit, but they had no worries. They had no reason to be concerned. Capricious is not going to attack them, not until at least Capricious gets through a few of those Banshees, and at that point, Flipstip would know. And now Flipstip with the Hover Switch. Capricious is not... No, oh, maybe they're kind of prepared. The Zeus will help, but the Zeus will have to be in position first. Against Hovercraft. The thing is, the big problem is going to be the Scalpels. And the Zeus can survive a few Scalpel hits. But the big question will be, is Flipstip going to go for that, or are they going to go entirely for Daggers? Oh, but, oh, never mind. Capricious actually knows us already. They know exactly what's going on. So their choice for Zeus is definitely a conscious choice to deal with the deal with these hovercrafts. I find that interesting. I mean, I can I can totally understand why you'd use that for daggers because daggers they have to get close, and the Zeus will be able to hit them first, basically. And with the EMP on top of that, it's going to be a lot harder for any real damage to be dealt by the daggers. I mean, look, they get stunned out in one shot, they get killed in two. Zeus is a really good choice here. And Capricious has the right idea. I hadn't really thought about it, but yeah, that is totally the right idea. What's the counter going to be, though? This is where scalpels actually are going to be a problem. Because Zeus will not... I mean, Zeus will be able to tank them, but they won't be able to hit them. I mean, I mentioned before it's okay, but it's tanking is where it's okay. Actually damaging the scalpel, no, the scalpel is the counter. For the most part. It's just... Throwing in some glaives on top of that. The thing is, Capricious knows. Capricious has a gremlin right here. We have not seen gremlin scouting like this in a long time. Though, admittedly, what I'm thinking of is gremlin start. Like, your first unit is a gremlin, and then you use that to go out, and then basically expand with that. Just not expand. Scout out with that, so you know what your opponent's doing. Whereas, with this, it was just the gremlins were there because of banshees, and why not scout with some? Surprisingly, Flipstip is not looking for them. They aren't really suspecting anything's there, and at this point, Capricious knows exactly what's going on. They know scalpels are being produced. Surprisingly, not trying to build up any counter to them, though. The Zeus are going to be having a hard time here. Capricious knows that's there. Flipstep knows Capricious is up front, but they don't really know where Capricious' army is for the most part. They don't actually have that information. So this is working out pretty nicely for Capricious right now, at least for military and information. In terms of economy, though, Flipstip is way ahead. But yeah, this is what I mean. Zeus can kind of tank this. The problem is, of course, can they deal with the fact that the range is much higher for the scalpel? And also, is the speed higher? I think it is. It's got to be higher. Oh yeah, the speed is 10 L mode per second higher. So yeah, the scalpels can get away. And Wyvern's... Okay. Okay, a bit of an interesting choice. Going for the Wyvern... Capricious is probably going to try to just... I guess splash out either this entire thing, or this, or maybe take out the factory directly. Though at this point, I don't know. I mean, the air factory is known, there is a flail coming up. At this point, I would say, yeah, Wyvern kind of makes sense, if for no other reason than to just bypass all the anti-air. Because you'll need quite a lot of anti-air to get rid of one of those Wyverns coming in and attacking. At the same time, that Wyvern is a lot of money. Capricious is behind economically. They aren't really even able to produce it that quickly, but we'll see in 35 seconds. And knowing where these daggers are, that is kind of handy, but the Zeus should be able to deal with that no problem. And the Vulture... Oh, nice! That actually... Oh, not quite. The Zeus are taking advantage of the reload time from the looks of it, but they're... They would have been better suited probably with Glaive support. But hey, that Vulture, it looks like that's Capricious' plan. Use the Vulture to get through, basically force these scalpels to fire... And then get other stuff in during the reload time, I suppose. But no, we are seeing... Gonna be getting rid of the scalpels. All but one down. Nice shot there. Not sure if the Wolverine totally paid for itself, but... Yeah, a couple more runs like that, it will. Of course, here's the reason why Amphib is popular and why Hover is popular. We see the center lake is being taken advantage of. And Capricious cannot do that. They can't take advantage of that. They could damage it, I suppose. Like, the Wolverine could blow that razor up. And, I mean... It, wouldn't be able to do it in one shot, but it could try. Problem, however, is that that's on the water. The only thing that can attack that is air, and the only thing that it's good against is air, so 
good luck for the air units right now. But it looks like Capricious is going to be trying to go over to the side there. Commander over to the north. What do they have right now? Lightning rifle and nano lathes. So they're just trying to defense crawl the northeast. At the same time, there is a... Okay, that dagger ball is a bit, bit scarier than I'm sure was thought, but not that scary overall. The Zeus able to tank that. I mean, the Zeus 2400 health is a big deal. So the daggers really can't survive this for too long. And a lot of daggers die to take out one Zeus. Whereas hardly any scalpels die for the same reason. Mm, I don't really agree with that use of Wyvern. The Zeus would have had no problem. I mean, I realize hitting this is a bit of an issue because there is the Razor right there. Especially with the Wyvern now dead. Or just about dead. Is it dead? It is now dead. I'm not sure that Wyvern was really worth it. I mean, in the situation, it was kind of hard to pick any other option. But yeah, that was... Probably not ideal. And flips up going back to the gunships, so at this point, Capricious is going to have a really hard time holding off either attack, with both air and ground coming in, and not a whole lot of money to deal with it. The commander defense crawl doing what it can, though. But I don't think flips up's worried. They're not dealing with that at all. They probably don't even care. They probably assume it's not going to be enough of a threat, that by the time it might become a threat, they'll have already won. Flips up's probably confident in that. Especially given that they basically have this lake that they can use as a big anti-air staging platform. Which means Capricious can't even build any air units right now. Capricious's air factory is totally dead in the water. Despite being on dry land, but metaphorically speaking. <laughs> dead due to water, apparently. That's the real problem. And at the same time, though, this is actually working out fairly well. This defense crawl commander push in the northeast... It's actually causing flips up to worry, as we can see with the Banshees coming in here. And more Lotuses to help out. I don't know if this will help. The really the commander needs to deal with this. But at the same time, that's clearly showing flips up's getting worried. Capricious knows at this point, at least, is fairly heavily suspecting. They are doing something right, or at least doing something that flips up does not want to see. And that question, though, is that going to work? Given the Mason Scalpel Drop about to go probably over to the northeast or into the main base. I almost guess main base just because the northeast, yeah, it's a bit of a problem. That's where Capricious could stage better attacks, but at the same time, destroy the main base, cut off the head. Just about. See where those go. They are going over to the western side. They are going to the main base from the west, from the back. So this main base is totally dead. Capricious basically has to make the most of the, that they can of this northeastern area they've just taken. Because they're also losing the center. This is probably it. I don't see Capricious with anything they have in place to deal with this. However, they did know these Valkyries were coming. But I don't think they have anything to deal with this. They don't have any Gremlins coming in. They have Caretakers being built up, trying to desperately build something, I guess. Not really sure what they can do. <clears throat> this is... This is probably it. I don't see any counters. None at all. We do see the unload point. Zeus are coming in. Like I said, this is known. This attack has been spotted. It was spotted to begin with. It was known from the start. But Flipstip just has such a larger economy. Capricious now finally getting that economy up and running as well. But they didn't really build up a huge amount. Now the question is, can they get in? And this, this is not going to work out. Unfortunately, the Zeus not in position to deal with the maces. The glaive is going to be torn to shreds. And the scalpels and maces. No, just pure mace. Because Riot Drop, that's what you do when you drop. You drop Riots. Really makes up for the lack of range and speed. But that Riot Drop, pretty much going to seal this. Or at least, going to get rid of the Cloakybot Factory. Capricious might try to rebuild here. They do have a Caretaker. They do have a fairly strong defensive position. I mean, they've taken the Northeast, but at the cost of their main base, or their starting base. And also, kind of at the cost of their Air Factory and everything around there. Southwest is gone, so opportunity cost is well there. And Flipstip... Has a much stronger economy. Capricious, I am impressed by your tenacity, but I don't know what there is that you can do. And we do have a Spectre coming in. Oh, that's a Zeus? That's a Zeus? Really? Oh, I guess it is. From the angle I was at, it looked almost like a Spectre, but nope, it is a Zeus. I mean, the drop didn't quite destroy the Cloakybot factory. Oh, did it? It did! Just barely, just before the mace dies. Down glows the Cloakybot factory. Any rebuilds? Anything else? Or is Capricious dead? Because I don't see Capricious being able to build any other units right now. They could rebuild the Cloakybot factory, but that's... 
That's going to be at least another 10-15 seconds. And they have no time right now. And the gremlin's been spotted! The spy gremlin has been spotted. I don't know if Capricious is going to move this out of the way to at least put it into a different position so it's not completely known. But I don't think Flipstep cares. In all honesty, I think Flipstep is so confident they're not even going to bother. They're just going over here. Get rid of the commander, get rid of the amphib plant being constructed, and then ultimately win the game that way. Because that's Capricious' trump card right now. Get this amphib plant up, finish that up, and then I guess build ducks and grizzly. Because I don't know what else you'd really do with an amphib plant at this point. And indeed, ducks coming out! Capricious' commander doing its best to stay alive. What's its range right now? Well, okay, its range is about 300 Elmo. It does have the disruptor bomb though, but yeah, main thing is the Lotus. So hey, at this point, Flipstep can't trivially break into the Northeast, so there may be a chance for Capricious right now. It's a long shot though, I don't really know how Capricious is going to get through Flipstep's army. I mean, they could, if they take out Metal Extractors, that'll at least mean they only have to deal with the army once. And the main base is getting pretty heavily defended. And there's a lot of reclaims, so I mean, there are options. It's just really tough. Capricious is going to be having to make every single move correctly from here on out if they want to have even a snowball's chance of winning this game. And, I mean, they're losing more and more. They did rebuild the Cloakybot factory. With the amount of money they have, I don't know if I agree. Although, sharpshooters may work pretty well. Maybe. Glaives to get rid of all these would work okay. Get rid of all those scalpels, but I don't think that's the priority. I think the priority is more to have the option. Or, actually, what they could do is Eraser on Warrior. Because Eraser, that's always a thing that's kind of underused in the Cloakybot factory. But it is such a powerful option. But at the same time, Flips have gone for a bunch of roaches. Are they going to go for an Eraser as well? Are they going to go for that? That is an option. I don't see a Sneaky Pete, so no, I don't, I don't think they're going for that particular strategy. But we could see that coming out of Capricious. I don't think that's happening, though. No sign of it. Seeing Artillery from there instead. And it looks like Capricious is just trying to build out. They are going for the Grizzly. There we go. That is the Grizzly. No real attacks, though. No attacks in infrastructure. Nothing really trying to destroy too much. There was one Metal Extractor blown up. That's about it. Not much else. That was about it. That's what I'm saying. That's kind of the theme of this game. Is Capricious does a bunch of stuff, but it's not huge. So it's always just about it. Not, oh my goodness, Capricious actually took this back. Because Capricious is going to have to be working really hard to take this back. And another drop, another massive drop, loads, that's just maces, no, there are more than just maces. Roach drop as well, and actually, surprisingly ineffective. Scalpel's able to stop two of the roaches outright. The rest of the roaches being stopped with minimal losses by the lotuses. Capricious is really doing a good job, but losing the commander, that is a blow. The grizzly just about finished, is finished, so at least it can help defend, but at this point... That is the last thing that that Amphib plant will build. The maces are not going to be stopped in time. Oh no, never mind! That Amphib plant actually has one more thing it could build. Not being stopped that quickly. But that Grizzly, is that Grizzly going to get through? I mean, Flipstep did have a Pyrrhic victory there. One, actually one conch. A single conch would be an awesome choice right now because that would then lead to this entire area being reclaimed. But losing the commander though, Flipstep, that was a good move. Get into the command there is going to make it a lot easier to break through. And no conch! This reclaim is totally open. Another grizzly instead being built. And right now, Capricious is very split up. Their armies are not together. The Halberds, however, are not in hold fire. No, they are basically firing at will. At this point, I still think Flipstep has probably the way in. They broke the north side. They broke the entire center. Really took that over, and honestly, Capricious is doing a great job defending, but going from defense to attack right now is going to be... I don't even know if it's going to be possible. And yeah, Capricious throws in the towel. Good tenacity, good scouting. I mean, that gremlin there was a really good pat. That was a really good choice. The Amphib plant... I'm not sure if I totally agree with that, the timing, but I do agree with... Actually, no, I agree with the timing. It's just Flipstep spotted it in time, dealt with it. But hey, Capricious had enough defenses that it took a lot of firepower for Flipster to deal with it. So at least Capricious, they defended really well. Ah, that was good. That was a fun game to watch. Okay, so last game tonight. 
is going to be between Emlis and El Torero on Badlands. Bit of a blast in the past there with this map. I have not seen this in at least a year, I think. So yeah, that is going to be in a couple minutes. So yeah, also Emlis, a really long time player who is not here for a while and is here back. Welcome back. I'm glad to see him again. Or them. Rather. I'm not sure if they're still working with game. I think they were with game replays for a while. I'm not sure if they still are. GameReplays.org, for those not familiar, is a big site for replays for RTS games. Not 0K, mind you. I mean, we have our own replay service, but it's really good for mostly Command and Conquer based games, but also, that's where it started, but it's just in general good stuff. That's pretty much where I got my start, honestly. Worked well for Acron for a long time. That's where all the replays were there. So, anyway, yeah, Endless. Welcome back. So, that'll be in a couple minutes, so stay tuned.